So what can we expect in Georgia and on Capitol Hill next week? Let's bring in Congressman Chuck Fleischman, the Republican from Tennessee, is a surrogate for the Purdue and Leffler campaigns, also a member of the House Appropriations Committee. Congressman, thanks for being with us this evening. Good evening. So you are one of those who has registered concerns with the vote count uh, from November 3rd. You plan to object to the Electoral College certification? That is correct. I do, uh, along probably with a unanimous Tennessee delegation in the House and Senate. Uh, fundamental to our great republic, our constitutional republic, is the sanctity of the vote. And after listening to my constituents from across the 3rd District of Tennessee and actually looking at what happened in these swing states, I've got grave concerns about the process that went on, and I'm going to vote those concerns with an objection standing with President Trump on, 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 on this week. Well, yes. uh, uh, Secretary of State uh, Brad Raffensperger, who has received a, a fair amount of criticism from the president, seemed to suggest uh, that, that the reason the president lost Georgia has not so much to do with fraud, but just the fact that uh, the president didn't excite Republican voters there. Listen to what the Secretary of State said earlier today on Fox. 20,000 Republican voters, traditional Republican voters, just skipped the presidential race. Senator David Perdue got 19,000 more votes in the metro regions than President Trump did. And in our Republican congressional areas, they got 33,000 more votes than President Trump did. And so that's really what happened is that Republicans, probably many of those would be the more moderate Republicans, just stayed away from that race or voted for the other side. So uh, that's his assessment of, of what happened. Can you expect that uh, those Republicans are going to be excited enough to go out and vote for Senators uh, Perdue and Leffler and, and, and put them in the Senate? Well, I think the fate of the Republic, as well as the fate of the Senate, rests in the great state of Georgia. Uh, both incumbent Senators Kelly Leffler and Senator Perdue deserve re-election. They're both fine Senators. They've done a great job. But... I think Republicans will understand the gravity of this moment in history and come out and vote, along with independents and, and some Democrats of good conscience. Uh, the Democratic candidates come from the far left of their spectrum. Uh, I don't think they're in line with the vast majority of Georgia citizens. So I'm looking forward to a big win for Republicans uh, in the Georgia Senate races. It is so important that we, we keep the United States Senate in Republican hands. According to a Fox News poll taken in early December, uh, more than a third of Americans believe that there was fraud in this presidential election, and they, they believe that it was essentially stolen from President Trump among all voters. You see the numbers there, 36 percent believe it was stolen. Trump voters, 77 percent. Even among Democrats, 10 percent say they believe the election was stolen. Um, Hence your push to get the uh, Electoral College vote held up until you get this uh, uh, investigation? The American people deserve answers. The American people deserve truth. And we have got to make sure that going forward, this is a precedential setting uh, moment for us in history. If we lose this opportunity, if we don't stand up for every legal vote being counted and every illegal vote not being counted, we will lose the fundamental fabric of our republic forever. This is not only about Donald Trump, this is about our great republic. We've got to stand up, we've got to object, and we've got to get it right. We've been in very adverse circumstances due to COVID. Certain states got it wrong. I think Georgia did get it wrong with the presidential election, with their mail-out uh, ballots and things like that. A lot of irregularities. We're still getting complaints of irregularities. We owe it to the American people to get it right. And that's why I'm going to object this week. These 11 senators uh, who are and senators elect who are uh, planning on uh, objecting to the Electoral College results put out a statement. It reads in part, we are not naive. We fully expect most, if not all, Democrats and perhaps more than a few Republicans to vote otherwise. But support of election integrity should not be a partisan issue. A fair and credible audit conducted expeditiously and completed well before January 20th would dramatically improve Americans' faith in our electoral process and would significantly enhance the le legitimacy of whoever becomes our next president. And then it is signed by the 11 senators and uh, senators-elect. You need, um, you need 
votes in the House to maintain this objection that you plan to lodge. And as long as Democrats control the House, you're not going to get that, are you? Well, it's yet to be seen. But if you look at the numbers, I, I can understand your assessment. But this is a vote of principle. This is a vote of conscience. This is going to be a legacy vote, not only for every member, but also, again, for the fundamental fabric of our great republic. We are privileged to live in the greatest nation in the world, and that's because I believe we're one nation under God, but I also believe that we are a constitutional republic. As, as a great republic, we've got to make sure that the sanctity of the vote, that the credibility of honest votes being counted and dishonest votes not being counted, the process has got to be fair, open, and honest. The vast majority of Americans have questions about this process. We owe it to them to get it right. Very quickly, I want to play what Tim Ryan, a Democrat of Ohio, had to say regarding this. They have that right. Uh, they're going to exercise that right. And then it's going to go to a vote in the House and the Senate. Uh, and both Republicans and Democrats will reject this because there's no evidence uh, by any credible source that says the election uh, was in any way fraudulent. You think you can come up with that evidence? Well, I think we're going to see more and more evidence come out every day. You referred to the great state of Georgia. They've had hearings this past week uncovering more and more irregularities. When we talk about what this is, we can call it irregularity, we can call it a problem. We got to make sure that we get it right for the American people. One legal person, one legal vote. Not one legal person, three illegal votes. Uh, th this COVID situation caused a situation in many swing states, I believe, where we've seen irregularities, where we've seen problems, and I think that is detrimental to our great constitutional republic. Congress Whether you're voting for president uh, or any other election, we've got to get it right. It's got to be honest. Congressman, Republican, uh, 